What's up? This is Benjamin yeah, King, yeah. and you are very loud, yeah. yeah What's up? This is Benjamin King, and you're listening to Do Not Click. Hey, I'm here with Jin Wenming. Jin Wenming. That's your Han Yu Pinyin name. Uh, rumored to be la. Rumored to be. So yeah, it's not. I don't admit it. When was the last time anyone called you that? Why? Well, whenever I hear that, like I get chills, man. You know, it's like your when your when your Chinese uh. Chinese teacher wants to call you out when your mother is not happy and you Ting Wa Mei Ah then you Yeah that's the vibe The last time I s- Actually the last time I seen you was the Muna Hirzi curtain call thing That's right we yeah. were at Muna Hirzi Yeah Damn. But hey But uh, before that you were actually my classmate right? Yes yeah. But you, I we, think we, we were in I think it was like an, I don't think it's like it's just an elective I think It wasn't like a, the course What? What lesson did we do? I really can't remember Probably something useless. Something in ph- photography, I don't know. Do you yeah. do photography? I did photography because I, I just found my course to be quite boring. So I wanted to do more exciting things. So I did the new media stuff, DNM, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Yeah. As it's yeah. called. Mm. Did photography, did uh, music. Yeah, la, just capo a bit. La. But yeah, la. I've always wondered how you graduated. I, I think in the, in the elective. I wonder how anyone graduates from RP, bro. Yeah, no, but I already seen you in a class like maybe three, three or four times out of that whole. Because you were busy with your yeah. lush. Yeah, here's the thing. Like, everyone who was in RP kind of was working outside already. Like, the funny thing was I was in a stage management class doing theatre. And, like, half the class, right, would not show up for class because they were already stage managers yeah. outside. Yeah. Which is that, crazy lah. After that, yeah. must do... What, what report? Uh, 6P, then you do your RJ. Yeah, RJ. RJ yeah. Reflection journal. What I learned yeah, in you my know, life. You know, in RP, I realized that after three years of using the laptop, at the end of three years, I picked up the pen. I realized that I couldn't write because like you spend three years just, you know, using the... I have a legit computer. concern that like my kids will not be able to write. Like no one like, born from now on will be able Forget to write because everyone is... Yeah, yeah, you know Forget. what I mean? Everyone yeah. is just like on their phones or typing away. This writing is useless. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> You've been very, very busy since RP? No, not really. I've been I've been decently busy. <laughs> decently busy. <laughs> John is uh, John is outside playing Fortnite. Fortnite. Um yeah. so if you hear random yelling and um uh, sexual noises, it's nothing suspicious. They're just killing people online. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I've been um yeah, my life took a weird turn after RP, I would say. Yeah. When you were in RP you were doing Lush, I think, right? I was doing Lush. I joined Lush around my second year. Mostly because I think one of our lecturers needed, she was a part-timer then and I think they needed like a new male voice. Mm-hmm. And I was like 18 and I had to get on and talk about like really lush stuff like how do you cook a fish in the healthy way or like the finest like jewelry or like, you know, the like, high-end fashion and luxury brands. And I knew jack shit about all those things. All I knew was like who was WWE champion at point in time. You know what I mean? That's all I oh, knew. Oh yeah. Oh, you, are you a WWE fan? <laughs> I kind of fell off the the wagon like a, for a couple of years, but I I, I followed until like um twenty fourteen or fifteen. Mm. I mean, I roughly know what's happening. I know Daniel Bryan is coming back. Yeah, and that's big news. Yeah, and I know that Brock isn't around anymore, right? Is he? Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he's he's still the champion. He's still oh he still is la. He wrestles, I think, about four or five times a year. Yeah, I mean, high- he's just he's just at a sell tickets la, He's the highest yeah highest paid wrestler. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Who's your favorite wrestler again? Dude. Uh, I mean, obviously, growing up, it would the have Rock. to be The Rock. Yeah, The Rock. Or Stone Cold. Have or you any met of The those Rock? Guys. I have not. Have you? I, not yet. Of course not. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I, but I, I imagine someone with your your connections will be able to no meet The Rock. La, no, no. The Rock is the highest paid actor in the world right now, I think. But my favorite right now, I mean, for I, I think my favorite in the past few years would be Randy Orton. La. Not, not right now, the way he is, but back when he just adopted the... This, that, that new moniker yeah. what is that that the, really um, the viper the viper yeah the yeah, viper yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then that was my favorite heels man heels all the way yeah speaking of Randy Orton he has a like a bunch of tattoos yeah, yeah are you are you a tattoo person am I a tattoo obviously not because you don't have a tattoo I think if I wasn't doing theatre or film I would have sleeved up a long time ago yeah yeah I would have I would have loved to do tats but you're afraid of how it will affect your no I mean I think more than anything, it's just very troublesome if you to do a role and you've got like and you are like Tattoos. basically a canvas and yeah. then you've got a foundation in your entire body that just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I mean, so just, it's, it's just the inconvenience. Though. It's yeah, it's, but it, it's inconvenient. Yeah. But if you could get a tattoo, what would it be? I imagine like the a Sam l- Willows. A large tit on my tit. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a large what? 
just one more boob lah. Get three boobs. Oh. Or um, <laughs> yeah, my mom's name but spelled wrongly on my chest. I don't know. I I, I haven't thought about it. So you can put the, that chin one ming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't thing. forget it. Yeah, don't forget. Wow. You know, yeah, man. when doing research on you, I've seen a lot of uh, oh, no. you, YouTube. Is there so many YouTube videos of you? They're all not true. <laughs> <laughs> not true. You know, there's one constant that you've uh. always mentioned that you have a dark past. <laughs> Do I? Did I say that? No, no. That there was like a d- oh, no, okay, not not dark past, like a dark <laughs> period of time that you went through. A dark period of time. Yeah, uh. uh, it's like a, a, I don't know depression time. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I thought like I, so, I but know, you I was there, part there of was, a gang. There and, was never a clarification on what this shit. That period was Oh are we getting there? Um, okay I mean if you're if Yeah you're yeah, open yeah to sure, talk sure, about sure. It, yeah. I mean I think it's important To talk about it I think mm. like The more people are open About like mental health mm. uh, But at the same time I don't want to talk about it Too much Because I feel like I don't want to enable people I think there's a lot of uh, Content out right now That kind of Romanticizes and celebrates uh, the, the craziness Of being crazy No but it's important Because uh, It's very important Because it shows How human you are I know I know yeah, how weird that sounds But no, 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 people yeah, 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 You know yeah. how people Perceive oh, celebrities uh, Have this perfect no, life I'm not and celebrity all love Bro <laughs> <laughs> no, But you know You know what I'm I saying mean, like, Yeah yeah I, I, I kind of get it I mean I think it's important To show that To know that like Okay here's the thing That day I was watching A clip of You know Chester Bennington Right mm. From Linkin Park Yeah One of my favourite bands Growing up And Shout out to Ch- Chester Rest in peace Yeah Shout out to everyone part of that but I think it was a video taken by his wife dude and this was a video that was a couple of hours before he, he killed himself mm-hmm. and it's just a video of him chilling out with his family eating jelly beans laughing playing with his kids and the dude does not look sick at all he looks completely fine he looks as happy as you or me he looks like normal functioning person just laughing away and there was no problem with him at all and then a couple of hours later dude kills himself so I mean I think what that teaches us is that like depression and suicidal tendencies doesn't have a face it doesn't have it, there's no like big alarm sign that goes this guy is going to kill himself there's nothing like that you know it people do it like, reminds like, me of uh, Robin Williams as well yeah Robin. Yeah, it's the same thing with him uh, he, I, mean, Robin, Robin, yeah. I mean Robin Williams suffered from substance abuse you want to talk about Chris Benoit there's another story I mean all these guys are tormented lah. and I think being famous and being in the public eye sometimes pressurizing kind, kind of does that to you mm. kind, of, kind of does that to you. you you have a warped sense of reality I think the most I think the hardest thing for me to grasp initially was the sensation that everyone knew me and everyone was talking about me and not in a good way. It's a very presumptuous and almost arrogant thing to say, oh, everyone knows me. And that's not true. I mean, if I walk out right now, we're in like Balestia. The aunties don't know me. Like most people won't know me. But sometimes it's just like the thought of it. And it's not a braggy thing. It's just like the possibility that someone will come up to you and go like, eh, or like they take a picture of you without you knowing. You know what I mean? And you don't really feel like comfortable. And for, I guess, natural introverts like myself, like, you will eventually have to become high-functioning. Like, you have to find a way to just be normal. And you can, that can, I don't know, that can fuck you up pretty bad, lah. You know what I mean? But for me, like, yeah, I've, I've been more or less okay, lah. I came out of it okay. Honestly, the thing that saved, like, my life was, like, uh, yeah, save your life. <laughs> not save my life, lah. But the thing that really got me out of the, de- yeah. depression was, was working out, lah. Getting into, like, uh, like a bit you of channel like, your yeah. channel your energy somewhere else a bit of combat fitness a bit of working out at Evolve MMA yeah <laughs> this is not an Evolve plug but, uh, <laughs> you, but yeah. I mean, aren't they sponsoring you or are you re- um, they are right? they, they currently are but yeah I think yeah they, they are mm. and the, the price is like ridiculous la, so mm. I mean it's a bit hard yeah no, there's a lot of stars there like I know Sandra is doing there as well Sandra is there um, Faka n- yeah, Fuzz, Fuzz, Fuzz is yeah. there. Angela is obviously there. Yeah, yeah I mean it's, it's a good, it's a good place, like You got all star. You got a good mix of really chill people, working adults. Then you've got like these fighters who like kill people for a living. So yeah. it's fun to just like <laughs> be there. So one advice for you is channel your thoughts or energy somewhere else. Through, yeah, through, through something like I think it's putting your energy into things that, especially being physical, because I think getting out there, doing things that uh, produce endorphins is really important. I think everyone knows how it feels to sit on their ass all day and like just bum around and like feel like you're not accomplished. And then that feeling can really get to you, that cabin fever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so it's so trapping, especially with like social media and like Facebook or Instagram. Like you just end up scrolling for an hour and you're like, yeah. what the hell is wrong with me? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the thing that I feel like, like you need to really shadow your life and it's easier said than done. But once you get down to it, it's quite easy. Lah. In terms of combat sports, you are not, <laughs> like there's no career for you no in, la. In, oh in, my god in I'm MMA. such a softy dude like I came from swimming so uh, the swimming as a sport is very different because you are essentially it's not, okay, it's not high impact 
it's not fast twitch slow mm. twitch low impact so my muscles are not conditioned to fight yeah like i can i can run around the ring for 30 minutes no problem cardio. but like or well, because cardio is okay but like i think my body is just still in shock after almost like a year and a half or two years of doing this like but i really enjoy it because i think it's very cerebral you have to think you know what i mean like i mean muay thai, muay thai is one thing but boxing is yeah there's an art yeah, it's boxing is so much harder because you're limited by what you can do. So you have to find even new things, you know, to Yeah. So it's very fun. So you've never competed competitively ever? I wanted to, but I, I started sparring a lot more in my gym, like Muay Thai. And then like in the past month I've got like three or four injuries. It's just schedule, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean like I cannot I can't put in like two two sessions a day. Like I wish I could. The commitment, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like real fighters would do that like, yeah. and I don't have the time. Mm, Alright yeah. You're currently doing A new album Yeah So Yeah We're doing a new album There's no information Out there right No no But it's dropping Very very soon Any exclusives You wanna give us I mean Since, how, this, how this, since this is a podcast How many tracks uh, Yeah Like that Like 10 <laughs> uh, yeah, 10 11 lah like that. But, but I mean LP or EP This is An EP Yeah And since We're on a podcast And I can't show you a visual I'll show you the visual So this is the album art Oh, that's so cool. It's so Star Wars y. Yeah. So, oh, you teaser. really are a Star Wars fan? Yeah. Huh? No, like, this is not a big Star Wars reference. It's just like. I don't know. I don't yeah, know why yeah. when I looked at that, I don't know what's, why Star Wars popped in my head. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, so I mean, you, uh, try wow. not to describe it in too many words, but mm. basically, that's that's the cover. La. So, I, love it. I, I think we're trying to. we're trying to. Um, yeah, we just got the edit today. So, we're trying to make it a bit more creative this time because we've just been, you know, I mean, like, we do pop music and that's really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but we kind of want to grow with the, the fan base a bit and, like, mature a little bit. Yeah, so, I don't know. So you started out as an indie band before you progressed to it. Yeah, I do a damn indie at the start. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, what, what do you think is the main difference between your indie music and your mainstream music? I think the lines, the official legal lines between indie and commercial are completely blurred nowadays. Yeah. Because you've got tons of artists who are independent, who are doing commercial yeah. work and they're doing very well. Mm. So I think indie is more of, of a state of mind, of um, an idea. Not, not being an, signed to a label. An attitude. Not just that. It's just like, like not pandering. I mean, okay, pandering is the wrong word, but like basically not pop. Lah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, like the indie word can have a very bad connotation as well as the sellout word. And I rather not identify with either, cause I will never be indie enough for the indie scene, <laughs> and I will never be pop enough for the pop scene. So I'm always the in guy. Between. I'm always the yeah stuck in the middle lah. Mediacorp always casts me as the indie weird dude, hipster dude, and then everyone in the hipster scene thinks I'm like doing commercial stuff. So the truth is that like yeah, you cannot please everyone lah, and I'm always caught in between, which is a great thing lah, honestly, cause I get to do both. So what would your main contributions be? I know you're a keyboardist vocalist and guitarist my contributions to the band I just clean up their shit lah basically <laughs> yeah I just uh, <laughs> but okay so essentially I know everyone works together and like you know in porn there's a fluffer yeah yeah la. <laughs> you're the fluffer <laughs> oh man no, I'm just kidding no I mean I I think for me like at the very start I used to do quite a, I used to lift quite a bit of the writing in terms of I used to write most of it but I'm very glad that nowadays especially with the last two albums like the writing is very shared the creative work is very shared. We're all starting to do it together. At the start, because we were indie, I mean, no one was doing shit for us. So obviously, like indie bands, you do your own financing, you do your own merchandise, you do your own planning, booking agent, manager. That's the same Milo's merchandise. Yeah, that was at the start. I mean, that was much earlier on. T-shirt, um, is it? Yeah, we had a whole bunch of stuff, man. We had like badges and tote bags and basically indie band. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, nice. A lot more crazy stuff. Yeah, but now, I mean, now that we're with a label, Honestly, a lot of that that taken responsibility of, has been taken care of, so we can focus on like other things, which is great. Yeah. So you can play the keyboard, you can play guitar, you can sing. <laughs> so, uh, would you agree that having more musical talents equates to being a better musician? Nah, man. I think the okay. This is my biggest gripe as a pop artist, but also coming from a classical music background, is that sometimes you can be too complicated mm-hmm. with the music. I know a lot of some people give us shit for being too simple with our music and that's fair because sometimes we only play four chords or our songs are, you know, like for the lowest demographic possible. Um, but I do enjoy like a lot of broader genres that I don't actually get to play with the Willows and that's fine. But the fact is that like, I think you should actually have a bass line. It's like if you're going to be a pro wrestler and be an actor, at least know how to take a bump, you know, at least how to, yeah. at least know how oh to Oh my deadlift. God, you know how to say bump. Yeah lah, of course oh, lah. Oh, you you, you know the lingos. I know the lingo, man. Uh, I know, so, yeah. I'm so proud of you for knowing that. <laughs> no, at least, that's, so you yeah, as a fan, why? you don't no, believe me. That, no, that shows that you are like above average 
<laughs> wrestling fan, you know. I that, la, yeah, I know yeah. You, you know all the you know the cafe work and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know who got screwed and shit. Oh, um, who? <laughs> Brett, oh, Brett, yeah. Brett screwed Brett. Yeah, Brett screwed Brett. <laughs> Um, and I know when they try to push to one too far, someone too far, like hashtag Roman Reigns. No, wow. Oh my god. But John Cena. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. but okay, but 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 I but I do respect the hell out of John Cena though mm. for the guy he is. And if you watch him in interviews, he's actually it's, like it's hard to hate him, lah. It's that hard to hate him. Yeah. As a dude, he's just really good. Yeah. As a wrestler, he's I. You know what he's I mean? All right, yeah. And like he's just a kid merchandise tool, yeah. la, But you know that ever since he started losing, he becomes more bearable. That yeah. I, people start to like him more. And to me, and that's the. That's how you should be if you if I you just, just win all the time. Yeah. It's hard to. I just want to check what all the writers in WWE are drinking because honestly, like people like Roman Reigns and Cena, like the moment you get the sense that the crowd is over them, then I'm heal Yeah, make, make them bad. I they mean, ha- they yeah. have the. It's the merchandise lah. Like, yeah, John Cena and Roman Reigns, they, the fans perceive them as like you know Vince McMahon's golden boys. Right. They know that the machine is behind them. Then they. Automatically, oh, yeah, we're not going to get behind him. I mean, yeah, exactly. But look at it. Like, it's 2018, right? And everyone forms their own narratives of who is good and who is bad. Like, yeah. who who knows what to think about Conor McGregor anymore? Like, mm. after all the shit he's pulled, yeah. right? Like, even Dana yeah. White doesn't know how to handle him anymore. Yeah. Yet, he's still, like, the most universally celebrated uh, act out there. But just because he knows how to get his name out, lah, and he knows how to brand. Do I think he's the best fighter out there right now? Hell no. no. Yeah. Nah, he's not. not. And especially since he got loaded, he's... I, do, I don't think he could even beat Holloway at this point, but, like, He's the most successful, uh, and he's what's getting UFC out there. So you, you just have to respect the fact that there's a dude who has basically built an empire. empire yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, having said that, you see Floyd Mayweather. He's a boxer, yeah. but the way he carries himself is like a pro wrestler. Yeah, he's, he's basically a heel. Yeah, so, exactly. And, and Conor McGregor as well. So he yeah. he does all these promos, uh, you know, so-called promos to, yeah. to insult yeah. the opponent. Yeah. and so he carries himself as a heel. Yeah. So I I feel like. These two, Conor McGregor and uh, Floyd Mayweather, they bring a breath of fresh air to their yeah. own respective sport because yeah. oh, I'll you just gotta sp- sell the story, lah. Yeah, it's sell the story. La. You have to show people why they want to buy tickets to watch them get defeated. I mean, like I'm totally down for that. As a lover of wrestling, growing up, I can see why people would cringe sometimes because they feel like yo, just stick to what you do. Hmm. I read this article by Chachri, who owns One Championship, yeah. and how he was like, yo. If Connor would do that in one FC, I would have fired his ass straight <laughs> up because that's not what Asian martial arts is about. You know what I mean? That's it's what, what traditional is about. It's about respect. It's about the love of it. And I can respect that. I mean, like, that's, that, that's dope. I mean, the honor that comes with Asian Asian tradition and martial arts is a dope thing, lah. I don't want to fuck with that. Like, I think, like, that's really important. But at the end of the day, what makes money is what but makes I mean, money. If, but I mean, if Amir would just go, yeah. like, hey, screw this dude. And then, you know, like, that would be so much more fun. Yeah. But that's not for me to say, lah. Whatever is works for your business. Like, if I could fight for a living, I'll be a heel you know like, Sam Willows should totally be a heel band you know? we are a heel band <laughs> <laughs> people should be like oh we hate the Sam Willows but then everybody wanna yeah. walk, don't buy the album I think it is harder because yeah music's a you different story yeah, I can't apply but it. okay it works in the rap world and hip hop world mm, that's why yeah. you got the Pusha T and Drake yeah. beef and all that the, shit when Eminem and whoever made diss tracks of each other yo so yeah solid and diss tracks are a thing that pop artists can't do like look at Katy Perry and Taylor Swift people are like, like Taylor why? Swift made Distracts, what? Their like distracts are like super, like super subtle. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, like, whatever lah. <laughs> like, it's hard to do a distract in pop music. But if you're a rapper, isn't like, like Papa Money somewhat a distract to all the haters? I mean, to all the yeah. haters who tell who tell us that you know. Fair enough. It's the closest thing that we would ever get to a distract. Mm. And then that's we've pushed the envelope, and then we're just gonna leave it there. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna Speaking touch it. Speaking of that, uh, I think it's probably one of my favorite songs now. Hey, Papa cheers, Money. man! Appreciate it. Yeah, dude. that's my <laughs> jogging music. Good. I would never work out to my own music. Dude. <laughs> Why I not? Would, I would. Uh, oh, do plug you? my eyeballs out before I ever do that. Because you listen to it again and I again and again and again in the studio, right? It's just weird. It's like. Why would people, okay, the most uncomfortable thing you can do for a musician is play their own song when you're just hanging with them. Unless they play, I mean, some musicians love that shit. Like, they would just play it for you anyway. But it's, yours is a band, what? Technically, you're not just listening to yourself. You're listening I to know, John and Okay, Sandra. like, it's like, when we, like, le- sometimes the band would go out to eat and then we'd go to, like, freaking, like, I don't know, like a seafood restaurant and they'd be like, Hey, Sam Willows. And then some guy would just plug our Spotify players into the freaking thing and we're eating to our own music with like like 50 <laughs> other people. Tell me that's not weird. That's yeah. freaking weird, dude. That's damn weird. I can't even eat my food. It's cr- cringe. It's oh, damn cringe, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> damn bad. When was the last time you guys performed live? I haven't yeah, been like seeing... like two months ago, I think. I think the problem with us is that because... I mean, yes, we are banned, but we also are not a band in a sense that we are 
so busy with other things now and like I just came off doing two TV shows, filming it. Uh, John's running this camp, this this whole production studio. Everyone's got a life. Everyone's doing their own thing. We're all kind of growing up. Narelle's s- doing Bollywood, Bollywood shows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll never let her forget that. So, I mean, like, we don't really have the luxury of being just a band band. And to be honest, like, no matter how talented you are, if you don't do shows, you're not going to improve. And for us, that means, like, we do maybe one show, like, like in two months and so we have to rehearse like crazy for that show just cause there's so much cobwebs Rusty? yeah you guys it's Rusty? like every time Undertaker comes back after yeah. Yeah, you know he's gotta <laughs> prep like crazy Is oh, it? Wait, you gotta start using WWE like, reference yeah one. like I'm not comparing us to the Undertaker I'm just saying no, that's, no, the, no. that's the shit we gotta yeah. go through you know what I mean no, so I would I love to, to, to perform more yeah of course it's just like if you yeah whatever prof- profession you do you gotta do it on the daily um, and the and the hardest thing to do is to perform because you've got nerves and it's scary to be on stage, you know, and like immediately the things you practice like a hundred times in a studio suddenly become a little bit harder to do. You know what I mean? So like there's always that. And if you don't do it enough, you're not going to get used to it. Yeah. Is being signed to a label somewhat restrictive to being able to perform whenever and wherever you want? It's good and bad. Yes, in a in a blatant sense, I would say there is a restriction because you can't just say yes to everything. Mm. But then again, you shouldn't be saying yes to everything. I think if you are at a certain level, um, there is a limit. There's a sense of overexposure. Like if you see the Sam Willows doing a gig every week, like why would you go for our concert yeah. at the end of the year? You know what I mean? Or why would you even bother with us? So, I think there's value in 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 having a business strategy. But at the same time, I would still have to perform more. So I don't know. It's 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 tough. Nothing beats a live performance, right? Sugar. It's them show, especially when you kill it. If you don't kill it, it's the worst thing. Uh. Do you still do theatre performances? I do. I did one last year and I'm in talks to do one next, a few, a few more next year. And it's fun, but it's just a bit time consuming. Uh. Comparing making music and acting and performing live and doing theatre performances, right. you still do enjoy the live crowd experience, right? There's nothing that beats it. Uh. I think that's again wrestling, but that's why all these guys are sticking around, lot. Like, the the high you get from, from either being booed or being cheered or having a reaction, is like incomparable. There's nothing that can beat it, and like even in theater when you're rehearsing a scene in a room, right? And let's say we're rehearsing like crazy, running lines, and there are like five jokes, and we're like, okay, these jokes might work or might not work. When once you bring that to a stage, it is never gonna go the way you planned it. People are going to react differently every night and the jokes you thought were going to work suddenly don't work. And then like you're like, oh, fuck, what I do? So, I mean, that's why having a live audience is, is the most fun thing because anything could go wrong and that's what makes it really amazing. How did your stint with Fly Entertainment came about? Where did Irene Ang find you? <laughs> which, which stone she... I found she Irene uncovered. Ang. Found uh, yeah, I found her across a crowded bar. <laughs> crowded lesbian oh, bar. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> How we found each other? I did a musical called... A Boys to Men, the musical. Mm -hmm. Not the movie itself. Uh, It was the musical adaptation. And I did it because Josh, who plays the lead role, was studying at the time. And they needed someone to fill in for the the role of Ken Chow. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, Ben, go and do it. So I did it. And I was introduced to this crazy world of the A Boys to Men fandom. A lot of Xiaomi Mei. And I was like, wow, this is very, very weird, but quite interesting. And then I guess Irene saw me uh, at the at the show. She liked what I did, and then she decided to sign my ass. So yeah, that's how Fly came about, man. Is there any clash between like you know your your label and her her work? Good question. Sometimes, but it's mostly just schedule stuff. And I think it's you tough. can't work around it. It's t- yeah, but but it's tough because I guess like a music artist will brand themselves differently. Like, if you look at, like, Gentle Bones, who is a big player now, or Lin Ying, Sam Ri, any of the other big local musicians, Charlie Lim, they don't do every single gig. They don't do hosting. They don't, like, they don't, I mean, some act, but they don't act as much. But for me, because I grew up acting, like, that's always been a part of me, and I kind of love it. It's just hard to balance, because then there's a danger of being overexposed as well. So you got to pick your projects. Priorities-wise, when it comes down to it, you still pick the band over your acting? I pick the band because... <laughs> you don't want to get kicked because out. Because John is outside and he's going to kick my ass <laughs> if I say no. <laughs> but no, I'm going to kill you in Fortnite. I mean, yeah, it kill me in Fortnite, kill me in real life. Got my sister in the band too. I think like there, there, is, there, is a, there are more players in the band. And so, you know, it's an it's, obligation. It's about to, not being selfish. Yeah, exactly. And so the band obviously takes precedence. But I think we all know within the band that like there is a shelf life, uh, 
like god damn it I'm not gonna keep playing pop music when I'm 45 you can go solo huh? yes. yeah I mean I mean solo is always there but like I, if- I don't see myself like playing pop music when I'm like you know 45 and doing this kind of stuff again I wanna do other stuff yeah. Have you ever thought about going solo? I have. I have. I mean, I've got some. I got some solo material that's that's kind of ready to go. But like, I think we're all just waiting for the right time before we embark on the solo projects, lah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So getting back into your acting, what was your greatest acting experience? Being a musician in the San <laughs> That's. I'm just acting. <laughs> just acting. Yeah. Just it's all fake. Uh, yeah. Which artist that you had the most fun working with? Artists. Uh, you mean like an actor or actor or actress? Yeah. Oh no 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 no! I recently came off doing a comedy with Gummit actually. Yeah. So I'm. Doing is this the one with uh, Jermaine Leong and uh, Jermaine is in it? Jermaine. You know Vanet- you know Jermaine. I worked with her when she was so young. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah, she I, was I, a child star, right? Like, I directed a TVC, so she was uh, ah, serious, a child star in the TVC. So I, I, and then so like fast forward maybe a decade later, like today, I I saw the your Instagram stories. Yeah. You, you hanging out with her I was yeah. like, Oh I was so proud of This girl still doing her thing She's killing it man She's very very good She's very young still I'm gonna like, get her in our podcast soon You should Get her to yeah. sing something like And Vanetta Lopez book. right Oh my god yeah What is this show about That you're doing uh, It's called Fam <laughs> Basically we're a family So Gummit's my dad Vanetta's my mom Jermaine's my sister <laughs> Patrick Teo's my dad Nikki Mueller is like This other character So it's fun It's just like It's a family comedy I get to act alongside my freaking heroes. Under One Roof 2.0. Uh, yeah, Under One Roof for Patrick Gang. Is it something 3.0. like that? 3.0. No, okay. Those shows were live studio audiences. The, obviously, we don't do that anymore, right? So this one is more, you know, just like normal normal comedy, normal like single cam sh- shooting. But it's just very fun because like, you get to learn from these guys and how they do it on set. Pick their brain. Yeah, you really pick their brain. You got to understand like timing and comedy and how to work with like freaking crew like that are just like constantly setting up 251s around you and trying to get light you know what I mean and like understanding the way things work do you watch them and learn or do you ask them questions yeah I'm I'm usually the guy who just stands beside the sea and go what are you doing huh? <laughs> what is this what does this button do how you do huh? hey can I try <laughs> yeah. I mean like I also love to shoot so I think I've always been curious about like the crew and what they do and hopefully one day I get to direct a bit more Okay, so what's this, all these Tinder imposters that you have? <laughs> Who supplies you with all these pictures? It's all me, bro. Yeah, I, when I get you bored secret, and I... secretly make all these yeah, dude. shadow clone accounts? Yeah, not secretly. Uh, on self do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's really you. Okay. Hey man, anything to get some action, man. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah, I don't know why people it's, are It's funny, are, you, it's funny you, it. This reminds me of uh, this video that you did. If I can't remember which video I saw on YouTube. Yeah. But you were like, oh, sh- the first thing Shia Shia asked me was like, are you gay? Yeah. A lot of people think I'm gay, which is great. <laughs> oh, so you're not lah. <laughs> I, I don't know, am I? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, who, what, what does it matter, right? Yeah. What maybe, does it matter? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you remind me of Michael Jackson. Huh? Not, not in a way like, for example, he's not the most alpha male kind of man. Manly, right, manly. right, right. But right. if he approaches a girl and like, hey, can I sing for you? <laughs> you know how wet the or girl. Or a little is. kid. I yeah, mean, that's wrong lah. Yeah, la. that, uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, you know, it's this, right. he, he has his own charm. No lah, I, I, I wrote this song with a friend called Unmanly Men And it's basically <laughs> about men who are just not manly <laughs> Not alpha male Yeah, the 2018 very sensitive new age guy <laughs> who, who can't change a tyre but who can book you an Uber <laughs> or a Grab You know what I'm saying? Who is always the guy who drives people home after Zoo Yeah mm, that's, 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 that's me lah yeah, yeah. I can find it in YouTube out there We performed it live a couple of times but And I think one of it's on YouTube somewhere But it's coming out, we're going to shoot a video for it Coming out soon as part of this like new sketch comedy thing I'm trying to do. So yeah. I've always had this perception of you. You're that guy la, like <laughs> <laughs> you're that guy. There's, there's always okay. that one weird guy and that's you. What I'm trying to say is that when I saw the podcast you did with Ministry of Funny, I, I had oh my God. I, I had no idea how philosophical you were. <laughs> like, like wow, this guy is so smart, sir. I legit watched from start to finish. You it, did, uh? It was very long, but... Yeah, I, I very little people do that, dude. No, but... Yeah, but it, which is but why... Well done. Yeah, which is why my podcast is just audio because you can... It's supposed to be listened when you're jogging or you're training. Yeah, I love that. I yeah, love those so things. It's, yeah. not, it's not like videos. So whoever's working out now, faster lah! Faster, faster. Yeah. Sam, <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam Willows. Ben, Benjamin King is telling you to... Uh, yeah, don't play Sam Willows. Don't play Sam <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but as I was saying, your thoughts are really deep, you know? Yeah. Like you were, you were They don't seem deep to me But I guess everyone has their own Like you know Dark uh, Is it Maybe it's chasm. because you're A well read person You read a lot I, I like to read I don't I don't think I'm well read now But I guess I'm this way Because I'm an overthinker la. I overthink a lot Which is why it takes me like A year to get something done But when I do it I want to make sure I do it good la. But it takes me like A damn long time 
as as opposed to John, who is just like a dua. You know, <laughs> he's really like, hey, dua, why are you scared? Just dua. You know, so for example, when we're working with 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 uh, with a new project or when we're coming up with like a new video, I'm the guy who goes like. Yeah, but I mean, does this is this the right demographic? What are people gonna say? You know, like I mean, are we being objectifying here? Are we putting too hard? Is this not relevant? And he's like, dude, shut up, lah. Just do, ah. Just do, ah. Just, do, ah. Just shut up and do, ah. You know what I mean? And who cares? And so I think it's very good to have enablers and maximizers like that in your life, like John, because I'm an overthinker. I think we're important as well because we keep everyone in check. But it's good to surround yourself with people who don't give a shit and who don't think just do. You know. Mm. So yeah, balance la. Balance. So every time you release a new album, like, like when you said you have all this thought process going on, where or di- different demographics and all oh that. Oh yeah. Does, does uh. it evolve? Does does that help evolve your music as well? Like all these decisions you have to. It make. informs it, but you be a damn fool, man, if you keep listening to what people want and try yeah, to. Yeah, because try to at the end of the day, it's just them. oh, let's just do music that we like, la, Yeah, look know? at Vince McMahon and, and Roman Reigns. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. He yeah. <laughs> if some do, Roman Reigns do had to do a Vince McMahon impression. Yeah, that's good. See, I can't do that. Jesus, that's good. You I want to spoil your voice, huh? No, I, I can't. I wouldn't be able to do that. I, I did. I did love. Was it? Was his character's name Bray Wyatt? Was Bray it? Wyatt, yeah. yeah, but he kind of fizzled out. Didn't he? Mystic. He's, he's uh, doing this thing with uh, Matt Hardy. This is he. He he's uh, he's a tag team champion with Matt Hardy right now. As of this moment. Oh shit. Matt Hardy is doing this thing where he's like the being a the, dick. No, the delete, delete, delete. He's like uh. Oh he right. Got, he this got is this new thing. He got this thing over where he's the broken Hardy boys. The broke. Oh okay okay. Yeah so yeah 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 yeah. Okay I I've yeah. heard of that yeah. So when he, when they came back in WrestleMania they had this like trademark issue with TNA. Yeah. Total non-stop action. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is like their right. So yeah. they they own that right to that character. So like what the Hardy Boys? No, the broken, the broken, the broken gimmick. gimmick. So okay. fast forward to 2018 when he finally got to use it. It's kind of like fizzled out, lah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. instead, but instead of broken, it's not like the woken, I guess. Ayo. So so Why? so <laughs> okay. I personally think it's because that they only want WWE to trademark the woken character. So. If he ever leaves WWE, he can still use the broken character. Yeah, so yeah, that's the businessman yeah. in him, la, I guess. I watched a video recently about the Hardy Boys and where they came from. I don't know if you saw it. It was like this, like, they, they brought, like, because they actually started their own wrestling gimmick in their own little town, in their mm. own stupid yeah. backyard. Yeah. It's freaking cool. Uh. They... But they all that shit though. Yeah, like they them own now. You don't get opportunities given to you, but they make their own opportunities. Yeah, you know, they yeah. set up their own wrestling. You don't wait for handouts. You yeah, just get it done, man. Yeah, yeah. You people to give you a, your job. Hardy so boys. It, yeah. Goals, man. What about you? If, if you could be one wrestler, right now, who would you want to be? Oh, this is gonna surprise you a little bit. I'm a fan of wrestling, but in general, I'm a fan of Japanese wrestling. So ah. there's there's this wrestler called Kenny Omega. Yeah, I heard yes. of him. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. If I be a character, I'll be, I'll be him. Okay, so he's a he's a gaijin. Gaijin mean, meaning foreigner in Japan. Right, right, right. Okay. So he's yeah, Canadian. Yeah, yeah. He goes to Japan, and he got himself over with a Japanese crowd. Serious? Uh? Yeah. So imagine your Asian performer, right? Imagine yeah. you going to, I don't know, Indonesia, and 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 then you got yourself. Oh, you 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 learn yeah. you, you learn their language you learn bahasa and right, then you right, right. you, you yeah. do bahasa song lapar and banget yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all I know yeah lapar banget bagus banget which, unch, unch. Which, which means he's hungry yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so what was that getting so you, you got yourself over with the Indonesian crowd right right so, so right. to me I like that mentality where the dedication you know you learn a new language yeah. you know, just dude I can't even learn my own language I can't even like do a JJ Lin and or JJ do a Lin. Nathan Hartono and learn my own bloody Chinese language I'm trying Han <laughs> Yu Pinyin yeah how, how you, would you, you pronounce you your name you probably Chihuahua 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 Ming that's how I feel like it sounds Ching uh, Ming and it's honestly okay I mean you can't see it now but it's the simplest thing to write it's like Five strokes and you're done. Yeah, which, which is basically tells you all you need to know about my dad's Chinese lah. It sucks lah. So he gave me the easiest Chinese name in the world. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, long story short, that guy is, to me is the best wrestler in the world lah. Really? He, yeah. he recently fought Chris Jericho in Japan. Why is he the best wrestler? It's just the overall package. Right. Oh, hang on. Is that a Kenny Omega shirt that you're wearing? Yeah, this is a Kenny. Yeah, I, forget, ah. I just saw. Yeah. Yeah, this is a Kenny. Okay, this is, I am a wearing order. a Kenny Omega shirt. Oh my god, he's such a fat boy. <laughs> I am. Who is who is your? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Who are you dating now? Are you dating Who's anyone? Is that okay to us? Oh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I'm, d- I'm dating someone I, and someone new. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's all well, I'm saying. Everyone, please go back to his uh, Instagram. Scroll down. Find. <laughs> there might be clues. Yeah. Clues, clues there. Yeah. 
I'm dating, I'm, just, dating, I'm dating a plant. Accept it. <laughs> it's 2018. A cactus. A cactus, yeah. I like it up the butt. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, That's a joke. Don't paraphrase it. And don't make that the, the, I, the trailer I'm, for this. I'm sure there's a pun somewhere which I, I can't oh think of, of a moment. Are you a punny person? Yeah, okay, sure. I mean, like, have you ever been to the zoo that only has one dog? No. It's called a shit zoo. It's a shit zoo. Oh, that's the dog. <laughs> nice. It's very good. Yeah, that's okay. my only one. Let's do some fun facts. Yeah, let's go. Favorite animal? Shit. I'm not shit. No, uh, shit is not an animal. No, I, 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 I dig the dolphins. They're pretty smart. They feel nice. The Singaporean I'll, dolphin. I nice. like things that feel nice. Yeah. Have you ever swam with dolphins? I touched one. I was I when I was a kid. I tried to stand on one, and then like it freaked out. Yeah, but I mean, I I have a morbid fear of fish. Like I cannot deal with fish, but I really dig dolphins. What would be your biggest fear? Uh, no fish. Ah, uh, fish. I I I I can't deal with fish if it's not fillet like on a plate. Is it ever since you got the bone stuck in your throat? Yeah, from, from I mean, not fish. even that. That was the worst thing ever. But before that, I already couldn't deal with like, like fish head curry. That's a no for me. I can't do that. I need it needs to be like fillet, and I can't really deep deep like oh shallow dive just cause I'm a pussy. You will still eat fish, right? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. I mean, I I dig fish. It's just like I can't recognize it as a fish, which is weird because I can eat lobsters and crabs and there's no problem. But, but the fish, yeah, okay. fish are bitches. Favorite TV show? Uh, right now Brooklyn Nine Nine. Mm. Like I'm on it and Is it the one that got cancelled by Yeah but got picked up Like right away No it got cancelled by Fox Then ha- NBC, well, NBC did, picked it up Did your heart sink When you heard the news Yeah Oh my god I was dying Did you not finish your series Yeah no I, I mean like I hadn't finished it yet But I started I just started watching anime actually For the first time oh, in my life Like okay. the first ever time in my life Naruto uh, No I mean I didn't start Naruto I started with um, uh, FMA uh, Full, Metal Full Metal Alchemist And then now I'm on this new one Called Tokyo Ghouls Mm. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul That's good Tokyo as well Ghoul. Yeah and I just started And I'm just like oh, You're sh- a big fan of everything uh. like, it, I mean it, I like to be cultured you you're, know you're a big fan of pop culture Yeah no okay I really dig pop culture no, It's very hard to find someone like you Where huh? you, you just oh, like uh. You just like everything Well I mean I, I don't like golf Golf is stupid <laughs> My best friend like plays golf. golf He's an idiot Why would anyone Who's play your best golf? friend? Is it not it's, John Chua? Huh? Uh, no, it is. Hi, John. <laughs> no, uh, no. I mean, my best friend is this golfer who is so full of him shit of himself. He's a piece of shit, and golf is lame. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just gonna say that. Who is the worst guest you've had on your podcast? Benjamin, Benjamin King. King. <laughs> uh, I can't have a shit counter. <laughs> that's not. I've never had a bad experience before. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I never. Let had. me give you a bad experience. <laughs> Want to see my dick? Sorry, <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> you know that most of my demographic is young kids, right? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Happy editing. Would you like to see Benjamin no! King's dick? <laughs> Highly inappropriate content. Right. Yeah. Kidding, guys. Uh, favorite Sam Willow song? Sam mm. Willow or Sam Willows? Should I sh- Sam Willows. Is it blasphemy if I don't Sam Willows. If I, if I don't see the S. We had a manager once who would like, every time someone goes, hey, can we hire Sam Willows? Uh, 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 it's the Sam Willows. She would say that. Duh. It, it will kill duh. me. Yeah, whatever. Just call it uh, Sam Willow. La. Let's call it like something pillows. Or so, just call so it that band. If the whole band is Sam Willows, you are Sam Willow, right? I'm just the we. <laughs> just the we. <laughs> You're just Sam. I'm just the we, yeah. I'm not even the Sam, I'm just the Wait, wait, wait. I've actually never got to know what's the meaning of Sam Willows. You can ask all of us and none of us will tell the answer. Oh, so it's never established uh, on media? We have said it before. Uh, but it's just a vague answer, is it? We've at, well, the first two years of our career, we just blew smoke up everyone's asses mm. and said, like, no, it's a... It's a big philosophical thing. It's a, it's, a it's an alter cons- ego. Conspiracy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You government, know, government, conspiracy. government conspiracy. Yeah, we we're made by Tochi Hen in his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Uh, but but no. The the truth is that like we just wanted like a cool name uh, that didn't sound like anything anyone had ever heard of before. Fun fact: Jeff Hardy has a alter ego called Willow. Damn it. Yeah. Well, so he's a sick copycat. Bring he has him, no originality. Bring, bring Jeff Hardy over to your band. I take him in a round of Muay Thai. <laughs> fight Jeff Hardy <laughs> No no drop kicks No swantans no, Just sw- swan- elbows Swantan <laughs> Yeah Swantan willows Between like Hizzy Nathan Hatono And all this YouTube famous click hey, Yo That sounds like a terrible click <laughs> <laughs> I mean you do have like this WhatsApp group chat With all these like Famous people in it right How do you know that <laughs> you, have your, you have your sources I, I have my sources uh, Yeah we're not very active on it though I won't say the, not very active. No, I won't say with the famous people. Like, like the famous ones are like your Tian Hua, your Night Owl Cinematics. I guess your D Cautious, who's also a friend. You think that Tian Hao is more famous than you? Oh, heaps, dude! Like, have you seen his Instagram? 
We've seen a lot of like some of panties he gets. <laughs> what? People just throw panties at him. I yeah, know, and I, he wears I, them. I see you a lot in the media, right? And him. Okay, maybe because I think he's, I he's, I dabble in more things. He's but an internet darling. He's a solid internet darling, and he's my darling too. I think like he he's been able to do a really good job with his brand, mm-hmm. and I mean the dude is is swimming in cash la, for a reason. Entrepreneur. La. He's really good at what he does. Every time I see his video, he was like, oh, I forgot to bring my shirt. Oh, let's go H&M and buy. You know, he's like, oh, does he do that? <laughs> the dude is successful as hell and like, you got to respect it. La. I mean, like, like to he be that la. young yeah. and to be that successful. I think that's one of, the, one of the biggest regrets in my life is that I loved so many things like as you have found out that I never really just like one Pin thing. Pin down the one thing. Yeah, I got really good at it. But I'm enjoying life lah, so I can't complain. Okay, last few questions. Having your face in magazines, do uh, you buy those magazines and keep them as trophies? I buy them and burn them. The <laughs> stake. Yeah. Buy all, all, yeah. The, all the copies in the shop. I burn them and say a little prayer. Uh, do you make a shrine? Of myself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only have a shrine of uh, Emma Watson and uh, Charles Gambino. Hmm. And that's it. Emma <laughs> Star Wars. Wa- right beside each other. Shout out to Emma Watson. You are my life. Uh, is there a Harry Potter movie new one coming up soon? Or yeah, yeah, the new Fantastic Beast is coming out, mm. but there's no Emma Watson, so I'm not gonna watch it. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. But magazine. No. <laughs> okay, like I mean, I think it's it, it sometimes weirds me out to see myself. But it's a novelty, you know, to have the. Yeah, I mean, th- I mean, obviously, if you're gonna do a cover shoot, they'll be kind enough to send you a copy, la, mm. So, uh, you don't usually have to buy one, and I find it the most. Can you imagine rocking up the cheers? And giving the cashier your own magazine, <laughs> asking to buy a thing, <laughs> is wear a mask. I'm just like, can I have one of these, please? Just turn your head away. Uh, how take, to how to survive socially? Like, I'll, I'll take I'll take three. It's even worse than buying a whole stack of condoms. That's, I'd rather buy a whole stack of condoms and loop that's, than that's me, by the way. Yeah, yeah with, with the stack of condoms on it, right? Like, <laughs> just to hide the, <laughs> the face. Yeah, put on the face, yeah. rubber face. But you get recognized. In 7-Elevens, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, not really. Depending who... I think it depends on where I'm at. Like, if I'm in town, then I, I get recognized a bit more. And and it's usually one of those like, hey, that guy, that guy, that guy. You know what I mean? That being said, you, you it's still possible for you to walk around Singapore, right? With being unnoticed. It is. It takes a while for people to like, hey, Benjamin K. Yeah, yeah I mean, and even if they, they notice, they're usually quite chill and they just, they don't really bother. Yeah, them. most experience is quite respectful, uh, yeah. I guess. Unless they're dicks la. And I've never really like Had a bad encounter no. I think the only bad encounters I've had Were people who Like sometimes come up to you And go like Eh You don't remember me right You don't remember right huh? You don't remember right huh? You forget right, right And then like They just keep doing that And you're just like Dude what the Yeah I mean I'll be happy to say That I've, I like I honestly forgot who you were But don't be a dick about it Because like Yeah la, Just don't be a dick la. Okay yeah. It has been a very interesting podcast. I, I can't remember where our yeah. conversations went. We went we are, we are currently so many WWE yeah. questions. Frank the and Emmett, I are currently now naked. The and most we're eating sushi off our bellies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all are missing out. It's too bad you don't do yeah. a video. I, I, I'm i having my uh, break, breakfast yeah. from fasting month. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I can't make a joke Benja- about that. Benjamin King's belly. I'm having sushi off my chest. I don't know about you. <laughs> having some sashimi. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Very informative podcast so far. Very, very, no, very fun person to talk to. Okay, uh, we'll just get to an advice you want to give to people who are currently in depression. (laughs) Ayo! (laughs) Since you're you're very good at it. To everyone who is currently in your own hole and you can't get out, um, know that you're really not alone and that there are lots of people who love you. And if you need help, just drop me a DM, drop Freak in a DM. Or just go and hit stuff in the gym because that really helped me. Yep. Uh, go to vendorboxing.com. Oh, yeah. Yeah. or Evolve MMA. <laughs> you know, Vendor Boxing offers a uh, much cheaper rate than yeah, uh, but Evolve, Evolve got MMA. towels. <laughs> we got towels too. Hello. <laughs> so come, yeah, but to be honest, I do want to try Vendor. It looks really fun. You can come over sometime. Yeah. Okay, and finally, a message for your listeners, uh, you know, fans, screaming girls, uh, throwing panties at you. Uh, keep your panties on <laughs> Sanitation is important You know you It's better not to Walk around without panties Because a lot of Tumblr assholes nowadays Trying to get upskirts uh, <laughs> Stay in school Don't do drugs Yeah wear shades buy, When it's hot Buy the album when it's out Buy the album when it's out You haven't given out The name of the album right You've done We a, have not You've done a self-titled album So I Okay maybe it's Yeah w- How arrogant would it be If you had another Self-titled, self-titled album Sam, yeah. Sam Willows, The Sam Willows. The second The second yeah. Second coming the second bunch of d- douchebags. <laughs> um, yeah, buy the album, subscribe to Do Not Click, smash the like button. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. Hey. Cheers, bro. Thanks for 
Anytime. Chow King in my 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 podcast ah! twice. Is, <laughs> is that your pun? Is that is that is that an overuse? That's what I'm gonna name my kid. I'm gonna name him Chow. <laughs> Chow King. And he's gonna have a shit of a time in the army. Is man. that is that a, an overuse pun? In your, you get that a lot from your life. Not as much as the eye banking lah. Eye banking, eye banking. Yeah lah. Eye banking. Oh, oh I, 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 why didn't I think of that? Can die. Alright, thanks Ben. Alright man.